Thank you all for coming tonight, especially in this terrible rainy weather. Um, we're glad to be hosting this discussion about the book by Darian Gale Lord, um, Artist Patrons and Public, Why Culture Changes. And I think that hosting it here in Chelsea is very fitting because this neighborhood in particular is a great example of cultural change. You know, it started out being a very industrial, abandoned area. And then the gallery started to come in and it's really blossomed into what I think is um, the International Art Center of the world. And around that, a lot of social transformation, the High Line, which is also a big supporter of the arts, restaurants, even down the street on the corner here on 26, the private school's opening and part of their curriculum is to engage with the galleries in Chelsea. So I think it's, it's very fitting. And um, just to give you a little bit of history about our gallery, um, we deal with a lot of young, emerging, and established artists that we think really go beyond boundaries and push the envelope. And two of the artists that we have here, we have two exhibitions that I think you've seen. One of the artists is here on the panel, Ernesto Pujol. And his work is revisiting the bathers and is really um, putting a twist on the traditional take on that. And um, sorry, I was just going <laughs> yeah, to quote. Um, exploring the male gaze turned onto itself, restaging it from the queer feminist perspective. And in this gallery is Ariana Page Russell, who has taken a skin condition that she has to explore issues of emotions and body and feminist issues. So um, that's a little bit about us. And also, um, just want to congratulate you on the book, and uh, we're happy to host this event and have you here, as well as Tom and Deborah, who we've also worked with on public projects, and we look forward to hearing what we're going to be discussing today. And I think Amy's going to do the introduction to moderate. Great, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to do a quick introduction of the people that we have on the panel. Um, it's always uh, hard to know just how much to explain before we get into the meat of the discussion, but I really want you to know what, uh, what incredible people uh, we have um, here tonight. There are so many rich connections actually between the panel, the gallery, all of you in the audience. I feel like there are so many long-standing uh, interconnections from, from over the years. It's really it's kind of overwhelming. Um, I think many of you know uh, Barry and uh, Gail Lord are really best known as the co-presidents of Lord Cultural Resources and uh, we're the largest firm uh, specializing in the planning and management of cultural institutions and programs. Um, we celebrated this year our 30th anniversary and uh, we have offices in New York, Toronto, Madrid, uh, Paris, and Mumbai and Beijing. We've, uh, the firm has completed over 1,800 cultural planning projects in 49 countries in six continents. And um, some of our clients include the Queen's Museum of Art, <laughs> the, uh, the Brooklyn Museum of Art, Central Park Conservancy most recently in New York, Art Institute of Chicago, and the list kind of goes on and on. Um, Barry and Gail started, uh, started publishing uh, the museum uh, manual series. Um, some of you may be familiar with it, and there are some examples over there. Uh, the Manual of Museum Management, Manual of Museum Planning, Exhibition, Strategic Planning for, for Museums. But uh, their most recent uh, book is, is this one that you see, the one that we're discussing tonight, which is Artists, uh, Patrons, and the Public. And all of the projects and life experiences over the course of 30 years have really provided them with the fodder for um, this book that focuses on cultural change. Um, you're going to have a chance to, to buy the book and get it signed up here uh, after, the, uh, after the discussion, so you can just note that. Um, we're really, really grateful to have um, uh, be joined by three incredible guests tonight. Um, Ernesto Pujol is a performance artist and social choreographer. Um, as uh, Dara said, his work is on display in the back, and um, it's site-specific and often described as American cultural portraiture. Pujol's undergraduate studies were in humanities and fine arts, followed by graduate work in education, media, and psychology. 
He has an MFA in Interdisciplinary Art Studio Practice from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and has uh, written essays on art ed education, uh, which are featured in Art School Propositions for the 21st Century, a very important new book, edited by Stephen Henry Madoff, and Learning Mind Experience into Art, edited by Mary Jane Jacob. And uh, Ernesto is currently working on a book of his own on performance art titled Body Walking Nowhere and serves as a graduate advisor at Parsons New School. So he's representing, officially representing the artist's point of view, but any point of view that you like. <laughs> Um, Deborah Fisher is an artist herself and a critic and administrator who has be, um, become the executive director of A Blade of Brass, which is a New York-based supporter of contemporary artists whose practice expands beyond the gallery and arts organizations that are finding new audiences, purposes, and distribution channels for contemporary art. She worked as collections manager for the Shelley and Donald Rubin Private collection and is studio manager for Socrates Sculpture Park in Long Island City. She's taught art history, art appreciation, and studio classes at NYU, St. John's University, and Nassau Community College. She's also the founder and president of the Urban Farm Syndicate, a social enterprise in its startup phase that partners with developers to modularly farm vacant lots in New York City. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tom Pinker Girl. Is the executive director of the Queens Museum of Art, which is in America's most diverse county. The museum serves as a cultural crossroads through art programs, community organizing, and educational outreach. Tom spent 12 years at PS1 Contemporary Art Center, first organizing 15 exhibitions in the 1980s, and then returning in 1999 as deputy director. He was director of New York City's Percent for Art program, where he oversaw 130 public art projects and is executive director of programs at the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture. He's also uh, published and was the editor of Dialogues in Public Art um, and is in the final stages of a new book, The Art of Social Cooperation. So I want to thank everybody for, um, for being here and, uh, and coming in this sort of nasty weather to, uh, to hold this discussion. So thank you. Welcome to all of our guests. <laughs> so now I am going to be quiet. <laughs> um, but I'd like to uh, I'd like to just start off the conversation. Um, Barry, I'm, I'm wondering if you can just introduce us to the book, um, talk a little bit about the relationship between patrons, artists, and the public, and what really inspired you and Gail to write the book. I'll start with the start with the last first. Um, we've been, as Amy said, we've been over 30 years now in the practice of, uh, of our firm uh, uh, in uh, planning and management of museums, but uh, particularly, uh, and I'm afraid I go back at least 20 years before that, uh, working in the museum field particularly, uh, and also someone in theaters. But our, uh, after many years, we came to the conclusion that we realized just a couple years ago that what have we really been about? You know, what, what really is this thing that we've been doing? And we realized that, well, yes, it's been about museums or other cultural institutions or theaters or what have you. But really, uh, what we've been involved in for the past 30 years has been cultural change. And we looked at, you know, what cultural change is happening around the world, and we realized this is a major headline story that we are all a part of. And all of you, I know, being part of the art world, coming to this event tonight, you're also all part of it, very much. Uh, cultural change is the really phenomenal uh, something that's happening that we all need to know more about and we need to identify. So we set out to really, first of all, apply some theories that were really took all the experience we've had, we tried to define the terms clearly, and then work out theories. We have seven principles in the book. Uh, to work out theories of why cultural change happens. We decided we really had to start with a fundamental question, why should culture change at all? We all take it for granted that it does, but why? Why does it? Why does culture change? And then, of course, how does culture change? Those are the things we try to deal with in the book. To answer the first part of your question, artists, patrons, and the public, the first key thing to be aware of is that Patrons are not merely people who come into an art gallery and buy a, buy a painting. 
uh, uh, nor are patrons the people who line up at the box office. By the way, we're dealing with all forms of art in here, not only visual arts, but all performing arts and all other, other forms of architecture as well. Patrons are we define as simply any individual or institution who, who enables an artist to produce more than one work. And any artist, all, any of us can produce at least one work of art. The question is, are we going to be able to go on producing more than one work of art? For that, we need some kind of patronage. So the patron of a particular artist may be her husband or his wife, maybe, uh, maybe a, a, an art school uh, where the person works, uh, maybe a gallery, uh, maybe uh, all, all kinds of uh, other people such as uh, patrons who uh, are develop, developing uh, productions of uh, theater productions and that sort of thing. These are all a quite a wide range of people who are patrons uh, but uh, are distinct from the public. And very briefly, to finally, we have two minutes, very briefly, what we try to lay out in the book is that there seems to be a three part, in fact, you can see it on the, um, on the, the monitor at the back there, we have a few diagrams trying to suggest it. Really, what happens, as far as we can make up, is that artists are continually looking and feeling something that's new in the world. We really genuinely believe that there are new things in the world that artists are aware of. Artists, an artist is aware of something new. It may, be in, it may be very much in terms of his internal feelings or her internal feelings. It may be uh, an awareness of something elsewhere or whatever, but, but the artist becomes aware of something new. And produces works of art that come out of that consciousness. Maybe more or less articulated, it doesn't matter. But the artist produces something new out of that consciousness. A patron is someone who responds to that and says, you know, that's, that's meaningful to me. That, me that, that's, that's, that's a reality. That's touching on something that I know about. It's something that, that is relevant to my world maybe suffering from it, or maybe profiting from it, or whatever, but I'm experiencing it, and so I recognize that work of art, the validity of it, uh, is, is significant to me, and so the patron responds. Patron may not, as I say, not necessarily somebody who buys something, it may be a critic uh, responding to it, or whatever, but the patron responds to what the artist produces, and as a result, you then get quantitative buildup. If there are more and more patrons responding to that, then it becomes available to the public, and then you get a, and then you get the public response. And so a cultural change happens. The quantitative changes lead to a qualitative change in in the nature of the world. And that's that's basically the kind of the the out, very quick outline of the theory that we that we advance in the book. Thank you.